Hey, I'm Adam, and I'm a senior technical specialist at Microsoft covering security compliance and identity. And for the past couple of months, I've been doing a series of videos walking you through tools from those solution areas. And I've got another one today, but it's with something brand new. Today, we're talking about Endpoint Data Loss Prevention, or DLP for short. Now, Endpoint DLP is not a new category of software. It's been around a really long time. And you can think of it conceptually as behaving a lot like antivirus does on your endpoint in that it wants to monitor what's read or written from disk. It wants to monitor what's inbound and outbound over your network connection. The challenge with that is there can actually be conflict because they're trying to do the same thing. When a new file gets written to disk, who gets to read it first? The antivirus solution to see if there's known malware in it or the endpoint DLP solution to see if there's a sensitive information type in it. There's this conflict of the two toddler agents arguing over who gets to go first every single time something happens on your PC. If you think of the millions upon millions, if not billions of IO that happens every single day, you can imagine how this can lead to challenges, blue screens, crashes, but mostly day to day, slow behavior. It's just gonna slow down your device because you have another layer of inspection. And how do you do this inspection? Well, a lot of these tools will link into private APIs, kernel extensions, deep components of the operating system. Now, when an operating system gets a feature update, say Windows 10 goes to version 20H2, some of that could change. And so what happens? Well, your endpoint DLP solution doesn't work with 20H2, so you are blocked from being able to update your operating system. So now your update cadence is being affected by another tool, by an agent on your PC. Not good. Not good at all. So you have the resource contention, you have the slowdown, you have patching challenges. There's a lot of problems with having more agents on your devices. That's why if you've watched these videos for any period of time, you notice how dismissive I'm always about more agents. We have to get agents off endpoints. They slow everything down. They degrade the experience. So we thought, how can we do endpoint DLP without introducing another agent? Well, that's because we already have a great agent in every single Windows 10 operating system. It's called Sense, S-E-N-S-E. -E. And Sense is used for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, our award-winning and beloved endpoint protection platform. Top right, Gartner Magic Quadrant, top right Forrester Wave, have to say it every time. And Sense is baked into the Windows 10 OS, it's patched with every patch, it's updated with every update, there's nothing to deploy or install, you just turn it on. So we thought if Sense is already there and it's really efficient and it's really fast and it doesn't degrade performance and it doesn't conflict with anything, how can we use that? So that's exactly what we did. Now, I should point out that you don't have to be a Microsoft Defender for Endpoint customer to take advantage of this. It's totally licensed separately. So if you just want Endpoint DLP and you already have an Endpoint protection platform you like, that's fine. But just want you to know under the covers, we're using tried and true, enterprise ready, IT analyst beloved technology to make this all work. So this is not our first rodeo, even though it might seem like it. Then there's the whole other side of it beyond the endpoint, which is the management plane, which is equally challenging. It's really, really hard to build DLP policies. Anybody who's ever waded into these waters knows how deep they get and how fast it gets deep. You're always trying to fight this battle of reducing false positives, increasing true positives, doing all that tweaking and testing to get it as good as possible. And you'll never get there. There's always going to be some challenges with that. But what if we could leverage all of that time investment you've already spent? Well, we do exactly that. See, we're baked into the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center, where you configure all your other DLP policies, and we can reuse everything you've built for those DLP policies. Have you already built a custom sensitive information type for your organization, like a part number? We can use it. Have you tweaked our built-in sensitive information types like social security number to be perfect for your use case? You can use that too. Are you using Microsoft information protection to apply sensitivity labels to your files? And you want to use those for data loss prevention decisions. 
you can do that too. So the great thing about this, it's baked into every Windows 10 OS. The agent's already there. It's lightweight, it's efficient, it doesn't conflict. And then from the configuration side, we can use all of the effort you've already put in securing Exchange Online and SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams and making them all compliant. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're just gonna apply that same stuff now to your Windows endpoints and beyond in the future. That is the promise of Microsoft Endpoint DLP. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna show you the console and then we're gonna dive over to an endpoint and show it to you in action. So let's go over to the console first and give you an idea and show you around. Here we are in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center and we're editing a DLP policy I've previously made. So we start with name and description and next we get to locations where we're gonna apply the policy. Now you might see the usual suspects here, Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive. We support Teams chat and channel messages as well, but you have to have the right license for that. And then you'll notice some new stuff at the bottom. Devices, cloud app security, ooh, on-premises scanner. All interesting, but let's stay focused on devices. So I can choose include, exclude. I'm including practically my whole organization here, but know that you can target these at different groups. And then I build my actual DLP rule. So I've got two of them here. This one is configured to look for sensitivity labels. So Microsoft information protection labels. I'm looking for any document that has confidential or highly confidential label on it. And what I'm going to do is audit or restrict activities on Windows devices. Now, I actually have three different options here in the dropdown. For example, I can do audit only, which is just going to generate an alert in the portal. I can block or I can block with override, which means I allow users to provide a business justification for why they need to break the rules, essentially. I have a second DLP rule here for sensitive information types. Now I'm just using the built-in ones, credit card number, social security number, but lessons you've learned along the way about which confidence interval works best for you or how many instances you wanna look for, you can reuse all of that here. And if you build a custom sensitive information type, plug it right in here, easy peasy. All right, next. I can put it in an audit mode where I'm just gonna generate alerts in the dashboard or turn it on right away, which is what we'll do here. And that's it. I would be done. I'd click submit and away I would go. I'm going to cancel this just because I don't want to save the changes here. But that's it. I just built my endpoint DLP policy. So now let's jump over to my endpoint and show you what it looks like in action. Here I am on my Windows 10 PC. And the first thing I want to do is show you these two Word docs I have on the desktop. So the first one's called Bruco Confidential. And this is a really basic document that has a sensitivity label for my company, Confidential Bruco FTE. So pretty basic stuff there. It has a sensitivity label. The other document contains only credit card information, made up by the way, and my company's default label, which is general. So what I'm gonna do first is try to copy the sensitivity label document to a flash drive. And you'll notice I get told I can't. I get an error message that pops up from Endpoint DLP. Now if I try to do it with the one with credit card numbers, same result. I can't do that either. So we're doing both sensitive information type detection as well as sensitivity labels. But if I drag this basic text file here, I can copy that over no problem because it doesn't contain either of those things I'm looking for with Endpoint DLP. Let's go over to the Edge browser, and here I have Google Drive, which is an unsanctioned app my company doesn't use. If I try to drag the sensitivity labeled document, I get told I can't do that. And if I try to drag the one with credit card numbers, I get the same result. Again, my organization is blocking protected content. If I go over to OneDrive for Business and try to copy those files over, however, this time it's going to succeed. I'm going to get a message that I'm uploading two items to documents, and in a moment, there they are, Bruco Confidential and credit card numbers. So that's it. That's the demonstration of Endpoint DLP. Thanks so much for joining me and for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you.